Hi everyone and welcome to another video in our series Linux for Network Engineers. Today we'll be talking about uh, how to do trace path analysis with Dublin Traceroute. So this is a utility that's been around for around five years and um, you can find it like easily in, in public repositories so you would be able to install it on Debian based Linux with apt get installed Dublin Traceroute but I would recommend to uh, not get the latest version because of the bug fixes and has the latest features to install it from source and to find more information about installation all these things I would suggest to go to the uh, Dublin Traceroute uh, website where you can find information about um, uh, how to install it so I'm sure that all of you are very aware of what Traceroute does right? It gives you the hop by hop information that um, a network flow um, goes through from one host to another. Now, when there is um, equal cost multipath routing between two hosts, then trace route in many cases is not accurate or not adequate or may give you even wrong and impossible information. For example, as a quick example here that also is taken from Dublin Trace Route website, um, we see here. Um, any CMP path between A and F and we see in the second and third hop there are more than one options. So if you run a trace route between these two these, these two hosts, trace route might give you this path, okay, that goes from A to F, or might give you wrong and impossible paths like this one for example, right? Uh, so this, these are known limitations of trace route and Dublin trace route comes to solve these limitations. Um, so Actually, tra Dublin Traceroute is based on another type of traceroute, which is called Paris Traceroute, with some improvements. So I would say the first um, traceroute that solved the ECMP uh, routing issue is Paris Traceroute, and Dublin Traceroute is the, um, an improvement on that because it has some added features that have to do with how it detects um, issues with, um, with uh, NATED addresses and so on and so forth. Um, so, um, so yeah, I would recommend to, if you want to read more details about the tool, how it works and what it offers, to go to either blog here, blog.dublin-traceroute.net and just to give an example of how, of what this looks like, I already did the installation here, all you have to do is uh, do Dublin Traceroute, you have to write as root. Uh, let's say 8888. I usually use the minus O option because if I don't, it's going to print a bunch of um, information in JSON format on so that output that probably won't be useful and um, it, uh, it's going to be difficult to, to actually to scroll through the real information. So it's as simple as that. You can, there are some other options. You can choose the source port, destination port, what's the delay between the, the packets it sends to. Um, you know, like uh, cover all these ECMP paths, and we'll see here in a few seconds how the output looks like. So this is how it looks like. Okay. So each one of these now flows is um, uh, one of these kind of uh, attempts that Dublin Traceroute is using to steer the flow of packets from one host to another through the different ECMP paths. Okay. This might be a little bit difficult to read, although it gives you all the integrity details. If you go really drill down on the information, if there's an NATED address somewhere, if there is like um, you know any um, big change in, in latency response time, you can get this you know text information right. And actually, if I open this file that I just created, 8.log, right, I'm gonna see the same information in a JSON format, so it's very useful if you want to, you know, parse this information and use it in a third-party tool, right? However, I wanted to also show you how this looks like in a graph. Actually, there's a, a Python module that also developed by Dublin Traceroute and you can find more information on how to install it on their website that shows how you can take that JSON file output and create a plot like this. So gives you, this gives you now a graphical representation of what you just saw, for example, right? So you see here we're going from this host to 8888 
and we see that from here to here there is only one path but here in Google's territory we see here probably a load balancer that has uh, six different paths right uh, and then finally it's a destination right the final destination so this kind of the graphical representation I think it's more you know um, easy to see uh, how a path might look like right so I would say of course with this additional information comes complexity on how to analyze the data and what to look at and this is more useful if we're talking about if you're trying to find routing in um, public let's say ISP internet facing uh, host right in one networks is simply of course is, is, is there but it's not as common and in one networks of course have better knowledge of how are you know routing supposed to look like right so place place route might be enough for one network but if we are trying to see in this um, um, uh, flow from A to B in ISP or internet uh, on the internet then uh, Dublin trace route is the way to go that's it for today uh, that's another tool for trace path analysis we talked about trace route in the past we talked talk about MTR this is a third tool that you should have again be aware of to use it as needed that's all thank you all bye